Thank you for joining us for a live class today. Uh, my name is Karen. I'm with CK Customs PA, and I'm also one of the admins for Cricket Help Desk Unofficial. And in today's live class, we're going to discuss some common issues with um, Cricket and design space um, and kind of discuss some of the troubleshooting techniques you can use with those. Um, we're going to look at um, password issues. Um, I've seen people reset their passwords and have trouble then getting into design space. Uh, we're going to look at your materials on your mat and, you know, when they're tearing instead of cutting, what you can possibly do with that. Um, what's happening when you have this beautiful design, but all it cuts is a square? Or what is that exclamation point with um, the yellow triangle around it. What does that mean and what do you do about it? So we're going to talk about all those topics today. Again, thank you for joining us. Um, and we're going to go ahead and flip screens and get started. Just a moment. All right. So the first screen I have us on is cricket.com. Um, and this is to discuss kind of that password issue. So I see in some of the Facebook groups, uh, people will write that they've changed their password and they can't log into Design Space. So my troubleshooting recommendation is to come to Cricut.com, go to Shop in the top right corner, click Sign In in the top right corner, and try to sign into your account here on the website. If you can successfully sign in here with that new password, but not into Design Space, I recommend going and restarting your computer. That'll fully close all of the cache data going on with Design Space and give you a fresh start into Design Space with that new password. If you cannot log in to this website with that new password and not log into Design Space, which is why you came here, I recommend clicking the forgot password and getting a brand new password. All right. Next, I'm going to close this. Next, we're going to talk about um, your materials tearing um, when it's you're trying to cut on your mat. So let me show you some examples of those. And I don't have too many um, here, but these are not my pictures. These are pictures I've gotten from some of the Facebook groups. Um, of their projects and they, you know, see here that this is lifting. Um, you can see down in the bottom corner, hopefully you can see, yep, you can see down in the bottom corner, there's um, pieces of it coming out of their design. If we look at this one, we got lots of tearing all around the words of this. So what does this mean? What is happening? Um, there are several things that could be happening. And again, this is kind of the common issues I'm seeing and let me switch here. These are some of the common issues I'm seeing um, and some common troubleshooting techniques. So could there be something outside of what I'm going to tell you? Absolutely. Um, but these are what I would try. The first thing I would try is cleaning my blade. So my foil ball. And I don't have my housing kit here, but I do have a blade in my hand. Um, but you kind of stick your blade you can keep it in the housing into your foil ball uh, five, six, ten times uh, just to clean any adhesive residue that may be on it from, you know, if you were cutting something like a permanent vinyl with adhesive, there could be some of that gooey adhesive on it. So that cleans your blade. That's one thing you can try. The other, uh, one of the other common things I see that causes that tearing and that ripping instead of cutting is if your mat is not tacky enough. Um, you kind of think, well, what does that have to do with it? If your mat's not tacky enough, your material is not staying in place. So as Cricut is trying to cut and moving the blade along, it's actually dragging your material because the material is not adhered to your mat. So you do need to make sure you have a tacky enough mat. Uh, similarly with the dragging, could be caused by pressure. So with the Cricut Maker, we don't have a knob on the top of our machine. All of our cut settings are done in design space. We pick our material. So make sure you're picking your material that you're actually cutting. 
Um, you know, the papers have different weights to them. You have your printer paper, you have your card stocks in all different weights. Make sure you're picking the right weight. That's kind of like the thickness of your paper. Um, or the vinyls have different thicknesses. You know, your your regular vinyl, um, you know, your iron-on versus your glitter versus your flock have different thicknesses. So pick the right material. Now, if you're an Explore Air 2 user, you can go to that custom setting on your knob and then pick your material in Design Space, just like on the Maker. Um, another possible cause for the ripping and the tearing is your blade um, may be wrong. If you've recently changed your blade and this has started and you're thinking this is a brand new blade, we know it's not dirty, and maybe you recently changed your mat too, so it's, it has perfect tack, um, the common issue I've seen when people change their blade is they're changing it to this one here with the gray cap. Hopefully you can see that. Um, this is the fine point blade sold by Cricut. But, especially in the Cricut Maker, you need to be using the white cap, which is the premium fine point blade. And they are super similar, but a hair different. I don't even know if it's enough to, to see. Not really. But there's a slight difference in the length of the blades. And the gray one is a hair longer, which causes the depth to be too deep. And you're actually, in a lot of those cases, they're cutting through the material. And if it's a vinyl, you're cutting through your carrier sheet or your paper backing if it's a, an adhesive vinyl. So um, if you've recently changed your blade, see if you've maybe got the regular fine point blade and not the premium fine point blade, because the premium fine point blade seems to do the trick. Okay, so for the next topic, um, I have some more pictures that I've gathered from Facebook. So again, not my photos, things like, like here's that, that box situation. So on the left, you have your print and cut. On the right, you just have your cut. And the reason we just see a box is because white is a color. So it doesn't care what colors you had here. It just sees the outermost edge to cut. So that's during the cleanup process that we need to make sure you get rid of those backgrounds or those parts that you don't want cut. Um, some of the other examples that I showed were like this apple where you have four colors. You have your red, your green, your brown or black stem, and then your white background. Again, you need to get rid of that white because all the cut side sees is your outermost cut. White is a color. I keep saying that um, for a reason because I see a lot of this in the Facebook groups. Um, then it also happens kind of at a more granular level. So when you think of the different pictures we see and some are more fuzzy than others and you don't have those clean defined edges, you get things that look like this, um, you know, around these eyes and around this webbing. Again, that's all taken care of in the cleanup process. All it saw was there was some color there. It may not have been black uh, in that image. It may have been gray or white, but it was there and wasn't cleaned up. So you need to take care of that during the cleanup process. And I have details of that in our SVG class on YouTube. Okay, so we've talked about tearing. We've talked about cleaning up your image. We talked about your password. Um, I have another, I have two more topics to touch on. Uh, but the next one we touch on is not was not on our agenda, but. Uh, when I was looking for pictures, I saw some that I wanted to discuss, and that was what what this is. Let's see. So on the left, we have their their canvas where it makes sense, and on the right, we have what's going to cut. It doesn't look like the canvas. So what's missing here is attach. Um, it looks like some of them may have been attached, but it was not all attached. And then if they're touching, you need to weld as well. And I have other examples of that also. Ada has another question. 
So for a single layer image surrounded by a square, how do you get rid of the square so you only have the central image? Yep. So Ada, again, that is during the upload process. So if you upload um, an image, and I don't know which one I'm going to have readily available here. But, uh, give me a moment to find something. Um, I think this one. Okay, so one color is the, the paw prints. But again, it's not a single color if you have a white background. It's actually two colors because that white is another color. So through this process, you'll be removing that second color, the white background square. Um, I'm not going to go through every detail of that here in this class. We have a video on that. Um, it's our SVG video. Probably just do a quick little. But um, you do have tools up here to remove the second color, aka the white. Um, you can even tell that you only have two colors, and you can alter your tolerance. Um, I'm not going to explain tolerance. Tolerance is definitely covered in SVG class, um, but it's what's going to help get you cleaner edges. So now when I click continue. You can see both my print and cut and my cut um, actually go to every little paw print and pad of the paw print uh, and not a white box. If I go back and go back again and continue through without cleaning up, that's where you, I didn't remove the white this time. So it's exactly what we were showing in those examples. So while this looks like a single color image, you know, the word love, it's really two because white is a color. Okay, hopefully that answers your question. And again, for more on that, check out our SVG class on YouTube. Um, I go through every single one of those upload tools um, in a lot more detail. That class is over an hour long. So there's a lot of good information um, in the SVG class on that. Um, so we were looking at attach um, and I showed that example. Let's just look at a couple more quick examples. Um, Zoom in a bit. So on the one side, all right, let's look at this one first. Here's their canvas, official cookie taster. Here's their mat, clearly all out of order. You know, design space is doing its best to save you material space, but they're maybe not saving us that time and headache of arranging it. So if you prefer to have it arranged as it was on your canvas, you need to make sure that you attach. Attach keeps it in the same order. Weld makes overlapping designs a single part. So truly nothing in this needs welded because nothing is overlapping itself. But if it was a script, I would weld as well. So you don't have cutouts in your letters. Is there another question? Um, yeah, Ada said the square is black and visible, uh, not just a white background. Um, kind of sounds like it might be part of the design yeah so um, if it's not something that you can take care of by cleaning it up you know that that remove tool during the upload um, doesn't just work for backgrounds you know you can remove any portion and any set of colors uh, during that but open it up here um, so you know as I go through the process it's not just for the background I can click on the paw prints and things like that. But if you um, have multiple cuts, then you can also probably use contour a bit. So contour is on your canvas. So if we go back to our canvas, um, so let's see what I have here. Let me insert this. Get rid of that for a moment. So if you have something like this, um, and there's like inner parts you want to get rid of, that's where you can use contour. 
um, and fill in some of those portions. So you actually take away some of your cuts. Like if I wanted um, this to be solid, you can take away cuts and it becomes a solid piece. Um, we go over contour in our design space basic navigation class that is also on YouTube. Um, so I got rid of all those inner parts by using contour there. Um, so maybe that'll help a little bit. Okay, so the last topic from our agenda is this exclamation point over on the right side. So I have that love image here. Um, and I want to use it. Um, let me expand a bit here. So I want to use it. Um, but I have this exclamation point. We need to address that before you can go any further with it. So what does it mean? Um, it typically shows up when you have a printing cut. So as you can see on the right, it says cut, it says print, meaning it's going to come out my printer and then cut out a design space. Uh, in this case, the cut portion would only be around this white edge because I didn't remove it in this one. So it would print love, but it would cut this large white box. Um, so if you were intending to do a print and cut and you have that exclamation point, I would hover over it and it should tell you what, or click on it and it should tell you what the issue is. So in this case, it's telling me the image is too large, reduce the image size to 6.75 inches by 9.25 or less. And that is standard. The print cuts are designed for your regular household printer, which uses the eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. So if they maximize that space, in design space, you need to do 6.75 by 9.25 because it has to add additional markings around your image for the Cricut to know where to cut. They call them registration marks. So if I make this smaller within those numbers, my, um, my little yield sign, so to say, went away. So that was a size issue um, and would be fine for a print and cut. See, it came back when I made it larger, goes away when I make it smaller. Um, sometimes though, people don't even realize that they have this set as a print and cut. Um, they got this exclamation point, can't figure out why they just can't cut this. Now, you can change something that you have set to a print and cut to just a cut. On the top over here, you go to the line type, click the drop down and select cut. That moves it to a cut. Now, again, I had a white background, so all it knew to cut was the most outer edge. Um, but if I had it for um, something with out an edge, let's hide that for a moment. If I had it for something without an edge and flipped it from a print and cut to a cut, it'll then just cut around the image. So hopefully that makes some sense. So if you're seeing that, that yellow kind of caution sign, let's go back a few steps, this guy, it's typical you'll see it with a print and cut when the print and cut is too large. So you need to assess one, if you meant to do a print and cut. And if you did, then you need to make sure that it's within the size that is compatible for our printers and our crickets. So I have gone through the agenda. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully you learned something new. Please like our video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy crafting.